SB here, and it's time for some more Hex Mechanics in action. Today we'll be taking a look at the mechanic Inspire. Inspire is an effect that shows up on a troop. When that troop is played on the field, then any troop that's played after that, with a cost equal to or greater than the troop on the field, gains a certain bonus. It can either be bonuses to the stats, or it can be an additional keyword like Steadfast, or Speed, or Swift Strike. So it's a very powerful mechanic that can snowball a, a match as time goes on and you get more of these out. Uh, this deck is actually has a few different mechanics with it. So there's the Inspire mechanic for things like the Protector Clergyman, which just raises stats. Uh, then it also has um, Blessing the Fallen. And Blessing the Fallen ensures that you can make early game trades with your troop and still have the Inspire effects trigger when new troops come into play. Because you really want to make sure that you can make those early game trades and still have your future troops uh, become relevant through that Inspire mechanic. In addition, uh, to finish off games uh, or to wipe a field, we've got the Legionnaire of Gawain, which doesn't have Inspire in, of it, in and of itself, but it does deal one damage to each opposing champion and troop for each Inspire effect that hits it. So great synergy with the Blessing of the Fallen. Uh, then this also has a Secret Laboratory, uh, because if you discard a troop, let's say late game, you've got um, a Kraken Guard Mariner or a Shield Trainer in your hand, and you know you're looking at things that have you know much higher defense. You could Secret Laboratory, kick that out into the graveyard, and then because of Blessing the Fallen, it'll still work with your higher cost troops as they come into play. And then we've also got the Protectorate Defender. Uh, this is a fantastic card because uh, the one shot returning the troop to your hand, Inspire always triggers when the troop comes into play. So you can actually get inspired multiple times through this effect. So if you have uh, you know a bunch of protector cler clergymen in, you play this down, it triggers the effects, and then you can return it to your hand and then play it again if you want to get it re-inspired. In addition, because it has a major socket, we're using the Prime Ruby of Destruction, which will deal damage equal to its attack to an opposing random troop. Um, so that you can you know, hit something with it, return it to your hand, hit it again, and it'll affect a higher and higher values uh, because it'll keep getting those Inspire triggers on it. In addition, we've got some base early game control with Inner Conflicts and Burns. Now, one thing to remember, this is the alpha version of Hex. So obviously the UI is not finalized and the art assets aren't all in place. There's tons of improvements that are still in the works. So just keep that in mind as the gameplay continues. We're going to be seeing lots of improvements and there's already been lots of improvements to the UI and to the art. So while this game already looks great, it only is going to be improving from here. Now the deck's ready, let's go ahead and take it for a spin. Okay. So let's see here. That's not a bad opening hand. Um, obviously, I'm one resource shy, one uh, diamond resource shy of uh, Blessing of the Fallen threshold. Uh, but other than that, it's it's looking like a pretty solid hand. Um, I've got an early game Kraken Guard Mariner for that um, early Inspire effect. And I've got a burn to, to hit anything that's too nasty. Okay. And another Ruby resource. Okay, so hopefully we get that... Um, Second diamond resource sometime soon. And now obviously, um, if anything with a one or greater cost is played, a troop, uh, then it'll get a plus one toughness. Okay, and next turn. Okay, he's got nothing. Great. Um, because he's got three cards in hand, and the Howling Brave... Ooh, excellent, the Lord Alexander. Okay, so I'm more worried about an ogre coming out, so I'm going to save my burn. I don't mind him doing a little bit of um, you know resource acceleration, that's fine. I'll just deal my one damage, and next turn I'll prep for uh, Lord Alexander to come out, and he'll be a 3-4. And then of course looking to get that um, second diamond resource out there so I can do a Blessing of the Fallen, so that way I can start trading off... Um, my troops and not really worrying about it. Okay, Honeycap. Big. Big 4-4. Four, four. Okay. But that's fine. Ready. Okay, so let's see what we get. Inner Conflict. Okay, well, excellent timing. I'll, I'll definitely take my turn to Inner Conflict. Um, that way I don't have to worry about it. Uh, that's great. He's only got two cards in hand. 
So that feels like sort of the, the next biggest threat that I'll have to contend with. So I don't mind spending that and nothing else. Um, yeah, so let's go ahead and uh, swing in with the Kraken Card Mariner. Just do a little bit of plinking. Okay, and then next turn, we'll look at finally getting that, uh, that Lord Alexander out. Now that there isn't something, you know, obviously that'll kill it off. Glimmer Glen Witch, see that's much more manageable. Don't mind that at all. Okay. Great, so yeah, I'll just be looking to Lord Alexander and that'll be a fantastic one. Okay, another ruby resource. Well, that's fine. Um, yes, Lord Alexander, let's get that out. Obviously not going to swing in with my Kraken Guard Mariner, but you see here now, uh, it's a 3-4 because of that Inspire effect. And we'll just pass here. And now it's a fantastic blocker against the Glimmer Glen Witch. Yep, perfect. And now anything, of course, if, as long as my Kraken Guard Mariner stays out, uh, now everything will get speed and a plus one toughness if it's a three or greater cost. So let's see. Oh, wow, okay, Tyrannosaurus Hex. That's fine. Uh, because I can use um, my Lord Alexander in conjunction with a burn. And another inner conflict. Well, hey, sure. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, inner conflict this as well. Uh, that's a pretty nasty troop, and he's down to zero cards, so I'm fine with using up that. Um, and then we'll also play out a Protector at Clergyman. And they both do the jig and give him a 3-3 three, three with speed. So that means that I am happy to continue and swing in with both. He's got no cards in hand, so there's no combat tricks. Um, I don't want to swing in with my Kraken Guard Mariner just now. I think that's just gonna that would be an obvious block. Um, and then I'll go ahead and create an Adamantian Elite. Obviously, that's what I'd be playing next turn. Uh, so I'm just gonna grab that card in hand. Uh, if I don't draw anything else, obviously. Uh, because that's gonna get wow, it's gonna be a plus one, plus two with speed. That's fine. I will gladly take the two damage. Gladly. Thank you. Okay, and a Feral Ogre. And that's why we were saving our burn, uh, because now we'll just burn him off. So let's see what we pull. Diamond Resource would be nice. Hey, thanks. Okay, so uh, now what I'll just do is I'll cast that burn, finish him off. Um, and that way I can also cast my Adamanthian Elite. And we're going to see a massive jig. Here we go. Whoa! Okay, so now it's a 4-5 with speed. Amazing. So that's fantastic. We'll swing in. Obviously nothing is a threat, so I don't even have to worry about, um, you know, about my Blessing of the Fallen. I could have attacked with a Crash Starter, but I got complacent. <laughs> I'm like, ah, no, just kick back there. You don't have to worry about it. Kraken Guard Mariner, you can just chill out there. Go ahead. I don't mind. So yeah, very fast now. And with uh, everything getting speed, or nearly everything getting speed, that's just going to be amazingly difficult for him to contend with. Uh, I think I got lethal. Yes, I do. Okay. So another diamond resource. A little bit too little too late, but uh, obviously with the Blessing of the Fallen, um, I now wouldn't care if I traded off with anything, so... Let's just go ahead and swing in for lethal and show them what we got. And, yep, that's fine. That's fine. Damn. There we go. So, short and sweet. Um, obviously, there it was a very fast ramp up. Uh, once I got out uh, those resources, I obviously had a burn and two inner conflicts for some early game control. And then once I got out the Lord Alexander and the Protector of Clergyman, um, it just made my um, charge power that much stronger. A 4-5 with speed is unbelievable. And of course, if I had uh, pulled, you know, additional things like, um, you know, the shield trainer or anything like that, then all of those would have um, just subsequently beefed up that troop even more. So, fantastic. So, Inspire becomes a very interesting effect, which can lead to some great 
mass troop plays. And with things like Blessing the Fallen, you don't even have to really worry about any early game trades that you make, uh, which is normally sort of the failing of anything that has sort of a buff mechanic to future troops. In addition, with that game, I didn't even need to rely on like my Legionnaire of Gawain or my Protectorate Defender. Um, and that means that the game, the deck has lots of built-in late game finishing potential. Inspire is an excellent mechanic, and as the card pool continues to increase, we're going to have lots of options, and you're not going to be uh, required to just look at something from a damage potential. You can start to look at, say, like some of the Sapphire Inspire effects, um, like the Cerulean Mirror Knight that starts doing card draw, and also there's, you know, Flight. So lots of very interesting mechanics that come off of Inspire, and as new keywords start being introduced into the game, Inspire becomes the mechanic from which you can then bring those keywords into any other troop. So I think Inspire has a lot of future potential as the sets develop. Thank you for watching. If you like the content, please take the time to subscribe. And as always, I'm MSB, wishing you good games and good times.